Let's have a look now. We've got some additional trig ratios to use on the unit circle. Uh, you may or may not have seen these values before um, or these ratios before. Uh, in terms of uh, triangles, uh, it's possible. Can't guarantee it. Uh, but they definitely happen here on our unit circle. Uh, and so you do need to know about them. Uh, and the first one is tangent. Okay, the first one is tangent. Now, in terms of our unit circle, we have tan theta. Tan theta. Now, in terms of our unit circle, that's going to be y over x. y over x in terms of the uh, coordinate plane, uh, which in trig is going to be sine theta over cos theta. Okay, but there are restrictions in that because it is a fraction. Uh, that means that cos theta is the denominator. Denominators can't be zero. Uh, so now we have cos theta is not equal to zero. So this is going to work within the same sort of way as uh, sine and cosine uh, in terms of the unit circle itself. It does slightly different things in terms of functions, but we will get to explore that. Uh, cotangent, well, the co part of cotangent, all right, simply complements, complements, okay, and the same with um, these two down here. There's complements, okay. Now, cotangent gets shortened to cot or cot, uh, so cot theta and it's the complement, so it's just that fraction turned upside down. So now we're going to have x on y, which is actually cosine theta over sine theta. And again, we have that restriction, but this time it's sine that's restricted uh, to not being zero. It can't be zero. Okay. Uh, with secant, uh, secant is uh, sec theta. Sec theta. Uh, and it uses the hypotenuse now. So the other ones weren't worrying about the hypotenuse anymore. Now we're using that hypotenuse, that unit value of 1, the radius of our circle being the hypotenuse or the, that sort of value. Um, so now we've got 1 because that's what the unit value is. This one's over x because it's using that uh, cos value. So we have 1 over cos theta. And uh, just like before... We're going to have that restriction of cos theta not being zero. So if secant and cosecant are complements, and secant uses cos theta, uh, cosecant, which is cosec of theta, is still going to be 1 over. All right, it's not going to be x over 1, which you, you would expect it to be if it followed the, that pattern. Uh, but it does sort of follow that, that in... It uses the opposite. So in this case, the opposite is 1 over y. Okay, so that makes it 1 over sine theta. And now we have that restriction again on sine theta not being 0. Okay, uh, we are going to explore this a little bit further in our next lesson. Um, but we're just going to see these ideas at the moment. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to move to the next little bit of our uh, lesson and we're going to talk about the signs of the ratios. Okay, Those signs of the ratios can become important uh, in terms of the functions and how they actually work together. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pop in uh, a quick little unit circle. So there's my coordinate plane chucked in my unit circle, I'm going to label a couple of things, okay? So over here we have our positive x-axis, and on the other side we have oops, our negative x-axis, and then up and down obviously we've got our positive and negative y-axis. And down the bottom. And for, they are labelled as such for obvious reasons. So to the right of the y-axis, you've got your positive x-value. So that's your positive x-axis. 
and that's how it works with the other ones as well. Now inside my circle in the different quadrants I'm going to chuck some letters. I'm going to chuck an A, an S, a T and a C. So I'm going in an anti-clockwise direction when I look at this. An anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so these letters. The A. Our A here. Over here. That A. It's standing for the fact that all the values uh, in terms of trig on a unit circle are positive. All values positive. All the values are positive in that circle because our both our axes, our x-axis and our y-axis in that quadrant are positive. So everything's going to be positive in that axis, in that um, section. Moving on our anti-clockwise direction again. Uh, we've got to the S. Now the S is going to stand for sine. And in this uh, particular quadrant, sine values are positive. The sine values are positive. Okay, so this just means that because the y-axis, which is our sine axis, for want of a better way of saying it, is positive, so all our sine values will be positive. The x-axis is negative, so, so that means we've got two opposite signs, can't have positive outcomes with that. Now, if we move along to the T in the third quadrant around, T obviously standing for tangent. So our tangent values are positive. And this is simply because both our cosine and sine values are going to be negative, and you have those two same signs, two same signs, give you positive results, okay? Uh, and then, of course, in that last quadrant, we have cosine. So the cosine values are our positive values, okay? Uh, simply because now we have our y-axis is negative, which means our sine values are negative. But our x-axis is the positive one, so we have our cosine values are positive. All right. So I'd just like to make a quick little note there that this is obviously related to the axes being used or being referred to. Okay, now... Next lesson, we will continue to explore this, uh, these ideas uh, for angles of any magnitude.